All right, guys, now we're going to go over the all-wheel drive 2J slash 1JZ sump that I've created. I'm going to compare and contrast some of the features and things that uh, we had some pain points with on the OEM uh, and your factory pan. Just give you guys an idea of what's going on here and why you might choose to run this over, say, this, um, and how it compares to your factory stuff. Just before I get into any of the action, these are also available for purchase by themselves. I can either provide the diffs for you uh, along with side these sumps, um, and axles and all that stuff for some of the overseas guys that may not be able to get that stuff. Um, and also, uh, if you have a Subaru, I don't know, a truck, or any sort of build that I don't currently have a kit for off the shelf ready to go, you guys want to make DIY your own builds um, or already have something that supports a front drive line and all that stuff, then you can go ahead and purchase this and retrofit this into your builds. Uh, I have no problem doing that. Um, they will be available for purchase on the website at allwheeldriveengineering.com separately um, with a differential, with axles, or without. It's all configurable. You guys can uh, settle that. Um, if you have any questions about that specifically, definitely reach out, um, and we'll do our best to get back to you guys. I have a ton of emails. It's very difficult to get through all of them, so appreciate your patience on that. All right, so now we're going to go over the all-wheel drive sump, compare that to the OEM all-wheel drive sump and a factory front sump just so you guys got a better idea of what's going on uh, some of the things that have been designed into this uh, pan we provide um, and that allow you to literally bolt this right to your rear-wheel drive 2j block or 1j block um, and basically get to the races um, you'll see why I chose to uh, make this and why these parts don't actually work like even if you were to source them and try to use them it's a bunch of hodgepodge and a bunch of welding and all sorts of crap you have to do. And it's just not uh, not friendly. It's it's not cheap. Uh, and these parts are rare and discontinued. You can't find parts for them. There's no support for them. You're on your own. We're just going to get into your factory sump. This is what we're all familiar with. This is what we all know. This is what we all have, a majority of us. So one thing I want you guys to pay special attention to here is the oil feed for the block. So basically, you have your pickup tube that comes from the pan rides through this area you got two bolts here that uh, pick up two bolts to uh, and you have this hole here where your block sucks oil through a passage and to the oil pump that is a real uh, big distinction between these two pans that you'll see right now that is uh, what is lacking from the OEM all-wheel drive sump that is the reason why you cannot just buy this sump here even if you find one online or you got a friend or Facebook whatever uh, it, it's just not going to work. Uh, the pattern is the same, or it's similar, I should say, um, but it does does not have this hole here uh, and is not compatible uh, with your rear-wheel drive 1J or 2J block. Uh, so therefore, what I'm saying is, if you buy these parts right here, these OEM all-wheel drive parts, you will not be able to utilize them on uh, your components that you have. Uh, additionally, I should mention, if you find a complete all-wheel drive 2J uh, setup, that is a naturally aspirated GE block um, the block is physically different so the, the the oil path here on the all-wheel drive 2j block actually isn't drilled in the block uh, they have a completely separate oiling pump uh, you can't find those parts again they're discontinued um, and they're extremely expensive if you do find them uh, because again they're discontinued and they're quite rare uh, and not to mention the oil capacity or i should say volume and oil pressure that a ge pump a naturally aspirated ge pump uh, that would flow on an engine like this is not going to be compatible to what you can get running my all-wheel drive sump with your, you know, aftermarket Titan or uh, modified uh, oil pumps. Um, so I'm just going to quickly flip this guy around. Now the inside, it's been sitting a little bit, so it's a slight bit of surface rust, but we do oil them. Everything here is made of steel, um, so it's super solid. You quite literally could hit whatever and this thing's going to take a lick and keep on going. The factory is a cast aluminum, very hard to weld, very hard to cut, very hard to modify, uh, and again does not work for your rear wheel drive 2Js, uh, which is what all of us have. So here you can see we have your oil pickup, 
uh, your pattern as you would expect. Uh, there is internal baffling already built into the sump. Uh, your cross tube so everything stays dry. Uh, and you already have your dash 10 drainage for your turbo lines and a oil dipstick uh, AN here, which goes to an oil dipstick I provide. Um, and you have here uh, your bearing support. Here on the bottom, we have bolts uh, with our RTV already on here. It's more of an access panel just to kind of look at things because the oil pickup tube is actually integrated. It's, it's hard welded. Um, it's not going to crack on you. You don't have to worry about it. You quite literally take this unit, RTV your block or the pan, whichever, uh, and stick them together. That's it. It's, it's that simple. There's no uh, separate oiling tube that you have to worry about. And you got a nice uh, oil drainage here, um, which is centrally located. Makes it easy if you want to service it from the left or the right of the vehicle. Additionally, there's some threads captivated welded here on the back of the sump. So when you go to remove the pan, it's very difficult. I know for you guys that have worked on your cars before, it's very difficult to remove the sumps once they've been RTV'd to the engine block. I've integrated some threads here on the back so you literally can stick a screw in it drive the screw and that will actually pry the pan off of the block. So it makes it super easy to service. You'll be able to get this pan off your engine block way faster than you would your factory stuff. Um, and that I thought was a pretty cool little detail to throw into there. Right on this side, you can see the cross tube here for the pickup tube and your mounting points for your differentials with my little fin supports. Uh, and everything here is just a nice solid package, ready to go right out of the box. Um, there is no coating on the inside of these oil pans. They are steel. Um, any aftermarket coatings that I found uh, to paint inside these pans has a potential to break off uh, and get into the internal engine components. So we just oil them, ship them out. Once they're in your car and running, you're not going to have any issues with rust or anything like that. Um, that's just one thing about these that you guys should understand is they're made of steel. We don't coat the insides because we don't want you to you know, be driving your car five years down the road and some powder coating come apart inside your pan, get into your oil strainer, and then you have sorts of, you know, all those sorts of issues. We avoid that entirely. Uh, we don't believe in running anything like that. And that's pretty much that. Now, I want to go over the all-wheel drive sump here. You guys can get a look here. So we got internal, baff internal baffling, your cross tube, and as you'll notice, there is no pickup for the oil. It just it doesn't exist. Uh, you have, here's the all-wheel drive 2J uh, pickup tube. And I'll just roughly set it in here just so you guys get an idea of how the oiling system works. Base sits something like that in the, in the all-wheel drive 2J block. And the oil pump itself actually has the pickup on the bottom of the pump. So there is no hole in the block for the oil feed uh, and this sump is basically not usable on your rear-wheel drive uh, engine block. So I highly advise against buying one of these. It's kind of a waste of money. Uh, you quite literally can't get it to work unless you're going to somehow cut this whole section out and put a drain tube. And I don't know if you guys have, ever, guys have ever welded cast aluminum that's impregnated with oil, but it is not going to work out how you think it is. You're going to have a ton of leaks. Uh, and if you screw up anything in regards to the oil uh, pickup tube, you'll have a dry start condition or you'll have a dry running condition and that's going to eat up your bearings and destroy your motor. So I highly advise against purchasing something like this, um, as I did, um, because it's not going to work. Uh, additionally, the mounts for your differential here, I'll try to stand these two guys up so you can see. They're different. Uh, you can see the spacing here on these two fronts and the rear uh, are different. So the front differential that I'm running with my kit that I offer is a say GS350, IS250, IS350. Uh, those models of cars have front differentials that fit onto my pan. So you get a US spec, massively produced, you can find them anywhere online or in the junkyards and run those all wheel drive front pumpkins and not have an issue at all. Here we have JDM only mounting. So if you were to buy this again, you cannot use that massively available front differential off of the new Lexus models that have different gear ratios. So you can kind of pick and choose. This locks you into your JDM only front diff. So again, uh, you have a lot of trouble with that. 
Uh, one thing I should mention is if you were to find this and you were a master welder and you wanted to take a crack at it, um, which again, I do not advise, uh, the differential sits a hell of a lot closer on the all-wheel drive OEM sum. Um, so trying to snake a uh, pickup tube through here, it's gonna be quite difficult. Um, also, when you go to bend aluminum tubing, because this is an aluminum pan, you'd have to use an aluminum tube for your pickup here. Um, aluminum thin walled tubing, welding that to cast is pretty much impossible in my opinion. Uh, so I would definitely uh, not waste my time or money on something like this. It'd just be a huge headache. Uh, my pan fixed all the problems and addressed all of the issues I had trying to run this. That's why I created it. That's why I went and invested a significant amount of money and time and blood, sweat, and tears into making something like this so that we can all have something off the shelf, ready to go, use as readily available parts. Um, we can all have a good time and find replacement parts. In terms of oil capacity, I retain the factory amount of oil. You kind of see we have internal baffling here to prevent oil slosh as it goes to the rear of the pan during hard launches and hard acceleration events. Additionally, our pickup tube is centrally located in the very rear of the pan, almost against the wall of the pan. Just so when you're doing hard launches or you're accelerating, you're not going to have any dry uh, intermediary periods or oil pressure drops or anything like that. That's one thing that was definitely lacking on the factory 2JZ uh, all-wheel drive sump as well, was not a robust enough oil pickup system uh, to, to be used in a racing um, configuration, if you will. So that's another thing that we went ahead and take, taken care of just right off the bat, it's integrated into our design. Uh, you don't have to worry about drilling and welding any of your, your turbo drains, uh, dipstick or anything crazy like that. We provide all of it right out of the box. So quite literally, you take this pan, you RTV it, you stick it to your block, you're good to go. Check your oil pressures, do your, you know, all the normal stuff you do, um, and you're pretty much good to go. Every single sump that we make here gets leak tested, and it also gets pressure tested. So we run it through its paces, we bolt it up to a block, we run the engine, make sure that we have proper oil pressure uh, and there's no leaks or anything funny, any funny business like that going on. We go through the extra care and the extra time uh, to make sure that this is gonna work and it's not just something that's gonna be a paperweight. So that's one thing I wanted to mention. This is the front differential for the all-wheel drive um, 2JZ right here. As you can see, those bolts are pretty much parallel. Well, if I adjust it here, those bolts are parallel and that goes right to the sump here. Remove this guy. All right, so I got the front differential for the all wheel drive 2J OEM stuff here. You can see the two front mounts are different. See here on my sump and the differentials that I'm running, uh, obviously my pattern matches and the mounts are a little different. So when it comes to this configuration of parts here, the all-wheel drive OEM stuff, all-wheel drive OEM 2J stuff, uh, you can't find these parts. They're super hard to find and you're limited to the gear ratio that these come in, uh, which is I think a 370 something. I don't know off the top of my head, maybe a 390, I can't remember, um, but not a very uh, adjustable configuration we'll say and just a lot of pain points all around here, which is why I just, didn't use any of this stuff. None of this stuff worked for me. I could have used the diff, chose not to. Chose to use this because you can find them anywhere. You can buy a gajillion of them for not too much money. Overall, it's just an easy configuration. So that's pretty much the sumps. Um, you could run these sumps in any configuration. If you have a Subaru, uh, I don't know, FRS or any other uh, chassis you can think of that you want to support and find spindles for, you can make your own drive line and axles and things like that. I could sell the sumps separately so you guys can kind of play around and make your own builds.